What's up guys? Welcome to this video. Today I'm going to be talking about something that you may have been taught. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say incorrectly. Um, I've been seeing this a lot uh, on Discord, on Reddit. I've seen people asking questions and posting their projects and I'm noticing that there's a specific like certain workflow that people are being taught uh, when it comes to texturing in Substance Painter and it's just plain wrong. It honestly it, it angers me that there's people actually out there teaching it this way. I can't think of any reason that this method would be, would be being used. I, I see no utility for it um, because all it does is just create more work for you to have to do after you've finished texturing your projects. And what I'm talking about here is when we separate out texture sets based on the material type that you'll see in an object. So this is an old project that I worked on like three plus years ago before I knew a lot of the things that I know today. Um, not to say that I did the same wrong thing that uh, that I'm going to be showcasing but just when I show the model there might be some things that you'd be like hey you could do that better. Yeah I know this is an old model but this is strictly for demonstration purposes for what I'm about to show you. So what I see a lot of people do is they'll go ahead and model an object and they'll go ahead and show you what the model for this thing looks like. This is the model that I'm that I'm working on right now. This is what it looks like in 3D. So this is my high poly version and then I've got my high or my low poly version here as well. And so what I see a lot of people do is they'll go ahead and start breaking up the materials based on the material type they see in the reference. So we'll call this brass. I'm not sure if this is brass. It's probably brass, but We'll call this brass, we'll call this like a black plastic, we'll call this a different kind of black plastic, and then this will be like steel, right? And they'll assign material IDs to each one of those different parts depending on what kind of material um, it has. And then they'll bring it into Painter, and they'll go ahead and start painting it. This is a very rough little five minute mock up that I did real quick, uh, just to try to get something somewhat similar to what I had before. Um, but you'll notice here I've got four separate texture sets. Now there's not inherently anything wrong with having four texture sets, but if I pull out my 2D viewport, maybe you'll start to see exactly what's wrong. So in my 2D viewport, I've got only these pieces in the brass, I've got these guys in plastic, I've got these guys in plastic, and I've got these guys in steel. Now if you haven't noticed, Everything that you just saw, each one of these UV shells, they're all laid out together into one cohesive UV map. And this is what that map looks like. This was an automatic layout, so if you have any uh, things to say about this layout, don't worry about it. That's not the point of this video. These are my UVs for this set of objects right here. Now, if I have everything all UV mapped together, why would I break them all out into different texture sets if in the end what I'm gonna have to do is recombine those back together inside of another third-party software like Photoshop or Affinity Photo Editor or something like that where people will take these texture maps let me go ahead and export these real quick so we can see what I'm talking about I'm gonna turn off my dilation so that I can get a decent something you know something decent to work with and I will put these into the right folder let me find it off screen real quick um, <clears throat> bear with me go to my Maya folder all right and got the about for removal and I'll create a new folder for this we'll call it demo textures select that folder okay so I'm gonna go ahead and export these all out into this folder here sure I'll stick with PBR it doesn't matter for this demonstration um, and I'm only gonna worry about doing the base uh, color for this thing real quick so uh, I'm gonna export them all but I'm only gonna use the base color so I'll go ahead and export all these guys these are my finished textures and then I'll open up my outfit directory once those are finished and we see we have all of these different maps for this one set of objects that are all UV mapped together. So let's say I wanted to, oh, you know what? I think that's not the right output template to get no, 
You know what? No, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, where did that go? Okay, it was in here. Sorry, I don't know why I closed that. Okay, so we will do, let's just say I'm gonna grab the base color for each of these. So what I'm gonna have to do is open up this, ignore that one, that's from another project. So I'd have this going on and then I would have to take each one of my other base color maps so this one this one and this one bring them into the same Photoshop document and now I'm gonna have to meticulously start masking off each of the individual parts so for instance on here I mean just to show what I what it would look like uh, I'm gonna do this backwards but basically I'd start masking out individual uh, UV shells. This isn't the best method, but this is just to show you a quick and dirty way of how you could do this. You could mask out the UV shells, right? I'm doing it backwards and I'm just gonna invert my mask and reveal it and have that laying over top of another one. And keep doing that until we have all of the UV shells in one uh, cohesive UV map one one texture map with all my different material types and I see this all the time it's honestly super frustrating because we're adding all these extra steps in the end when it's completely unnecessary now here's what you should be doing if this is what you've been doing if this is what you've been taught stop doing that we're gonna go back to square one I'm gonna go back into my Maya folder or my Maya software my bad um, and this is the same principle for all software. It doesn't matter if you're using Blender, Max, whatever. It's the same principle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give all of these the same material ID. So I'm going to create a new material. I'll just do a Lambert. It doesn't matter at this point. Um, and I'm going to name this Lambert. We'll call it uh, Valve Core Remove underscore mat underscore mat is my convention my naming convention that I use for all my projects for you and your studio or your personal needs it can be whatever you want whatever you normally would use but I'm gonna give all of these one material ID and I'm doing that because they're all already UV mapped together anything you have in one solid UV map should be one material ID and at this point you might be wondering well I've been taught to keep them separate so that I can easily put the different materials on my textures inside of Substance Painter. Well, that's one core thing about Substance Painter that this method is failing to teach you, and that is all of that can be done simply by masking. So what do I mean by masking? If I go into Substance Painter, and well, first of all, let's go ahead and export this uh, this match this map this object I cannot talk today sorry I'm gonna export this object I'm gonna overlap overwrite the uh, original one that I did and I'm gonna go ahead and re-import this mesh and now it's all one material and it's all on one UV map now masking is like the core function of Substance Painter as well as pretty much any you know image editing or texturing software uh, if you're not familiar with masking this is the this is the basic concept so here we go I'm gonna go ahead and just create um, let's just say we're gonna do steel right we're gonna place a steel material and it's gonna be applied to the entire thing obviously I don't want this material applied to the entire thing so this is where I would go ahead and start doing my masking if I right click on the layer or the group of layers that I want to mask and I do add a black mask in this case we're turning it off basically we're masking out everything and then I right click and add paint anything that I paint white if you scroll down here you'll notice my my brush is white right now anything that I paint white will be revealed anything that I paint black if I switch it to black by hitting, hitting X or just dragging the slider all the way to black anything I hit with black it's gonna be hidden 
and that is the core concept of masking black is revealed white sorry white is revealed black is hidden and you can do any number of grayscale values in between if you want to have something partially revealed partially hidden things like that you can do like gradients things like that so this is I feel like this is what's not being taught or maybe taught incorrectly to a lot of the people that have been doing it the way that I was mentioning before where they had all the different material types in separate texture sets and that's just gonna cause you a lot of uh, headaches down the line like I mentioned you're gonna have to go back in and meticulously recombine all those texture sets in Photoshop and that's a huge pain we don't want to deal with that that's not what we want so here's what we're gonna do instead we're gonna start this project from scratch using just the one UV layout and first I'm gonna go ahead and mask sorry I'm gonna go ahead and bake again I don't know what's wrong with me I can't talk today uh, these are 4096 I'm not gonna do the thickness or position just for the sake of this and then we're gonna go ahead and load in our high poly but actually I'm gonna back up a little bit and we're gonna talk about masking my by material type I feel like this is where the misconception comes in when somebody's teaching this they might be teaching it incorrectly but they might be meaning to do it like this so when you want to give different materials uh, IDs to the different parts in your object what they might be talking about is doing it to your high poly now here's what I mean by that on my high poly for instance I have this as one object but you'll see in the object I have two parts to it so I have this outer part which is like a regular steel and then I have this inner part which is again it's like a steel screw but let's say I wanted it to be like a painted black steel or something this is where material IDs and material color would come into play here now you can do this one of two ways if I go up to um, I think it's under rendering I don't do this too much texturing lighting and shading you know what? I can't remember well the way that I was going to show is with vertex color um, but the way that I'm going to show here is just by simply assigning different materials and making them different colors so we're gonna uh, give the screw a different color from this outside material here so I'm gonna go ahead and assign a new material we'll give it a Lambert I'm gonna go into my attribute editor and I'm gonna change that Lambert uh, the name isn't super important if you want to make it uh, you can so I'll just call this screw the biggest most important thing is that I want this part to be a different color and so the color doesn't matter all we want is different colors so that when I bake my ID map we can easily differentiate between the different colors so I'll give this something like I don't know bright salmon color or whatever and then I'll do the same thing with the outside piece and I will give this another color Lambert and we'll make this one like blue something that's far away from the other color now technically I could have done this where I'm only giving a separate color to the screw um, and that would have been totally fine as long as the part that you want to have a different uh, material inside a substance and mask out has a different color on your high poly then it's totally fine I do see a lot where people will assign different colors to every single object in their scene and I honestly don't see a point to that um, because I'm only really worrying about masking out different parts of one object if that makes sense so if, if all these things are different objects already then I don't need to make them different colors so the other part I think there was one more part that wants a different color okay yeah this over here I know this part um, well it looks like I made these combined so here's what we'll do I'm going to select all these faces just grow my selection outward until we get to the outside of this ring here let's keep it going and I think that's good enough we're gonna go ahead and give this another um, material we'll give it a Lambert and we'll make this one we'll do this one like greenish actually that's too close to the other blue it's not but for my sanity I'm gonna make it like a purple sure that works okay so the only parts that I need to have different materials that are on one object I've gone ahead and given a different color here on the high poly so I'm gonna go ahead and re-export my high poly 
and have it overwrite the original one that I had exported. That's going to take a second to finish up. Cool beans, got that. All right, and then it's going to go ahead and automatically re-import the high poly here in the baker. Let me go ahead and adjust my max frontal distance so it's not too far out. And that looks good. Okay, so now we can go ahead and bake. Um, I will change my match settings to by mesh name and my anti-aliasing. Actually, I'm going to leave it off for the sake of speed. Uh, and then curvature, I always change self intersection intersection to only mesh name, only same mesh name, so that my curvature map isn't picking up, um, you know, adjacent objects. And I think everything else, I'm just going to go ahead and leave alone. And we'll go ahead and bake that out. And what's going on? Hold on, it's not actually. Let me. Oh, I see what happened. Okay, I've got my matching by mesh name. I've got all these errors here. And that's because for some reason on this super old project, I did underscore low and underscore high with capital letters. I don't know why I did that. Again, I was fairly new to substance and baking and all this stuff when I made this project years ago. So uh, bear with me. Now they're all matching and we can go ahead and try that bake again. Let's see what happens. Uh, I saw a problem with my ID bake. Let me go ahead and look at the ID map real quick. Oh no, it worked. Okay, let's try this again. Uh, baking process. All right, let's try this one more time. Okay, it's gonna bake out all of our colors. That's not what I meant to say either. They call it colors, that doesn't make sense. Okay. So now we've got everything baked and we can go ahead and start masking out all of our different material types. And we're gonna do it all in one layer stack on one texture set. We don't need anything else to do this for us. So we'll start with the steel, since we already had that open and I just closed it, so that was dumb. Um, We'll do this steel scratched. I'm not going for accuracy here. Uh, I'm just trying to do this fast. All right, so we've got the steel scratched and um, I only want to apply it to the parts that are gonna be steel. So I'll go ahead and do a black mask. I'll add paint. And instead of painting with a paintbrush, I have some options here. So first option I'm gonna use is the polyfill. And with this selected, I'm gonna to go to uh, actual mesh fill. So you have Polygon fill, where it'll fill individual faces. Try fill, where let's say these were quads, it'll fill one half of the quad, but in this case, this is all triangulated, so these two are effectively the same when you have a triangulated mesh. This one will fill in entire objects, or entire, um, you know, contiguous meshes. And then this object will just fill in UV islands. So like, if this UV island is selected, only what's in that UV island will be masked on or off. So let me go ahead and just unmask everything. And we only want the this, this steel part, so let's take a look at our reference. We've got this part, this part, this little end of the valve core, and that's pretty much it. So I'm just going to apply my mask to this guy here, the valve core thingy, and this. Perfect. Now, let's say I wanted a painted black steel for that little screw head there. What I can do now on top of that is I will do, let's say, painted steel. Sure, we'll do this painted steel rough. Why not? I'm going to go ahead and throw this on top of there. And it doesn't look amazing, but we're not going to mess with it for now. What I'm going to do is add another black mask to this one. And then on that mask, instead of a paint, I'm going to add a color selection. And that's where my ID map is going to come into play. If I click here on pick color under colors and I select this red color, it's going to go ahead and just mask out what's inside that red color. Now I can dial in the mask if I want. I can bring this hardness down a little bit. I can mess with the tolerance. But since this was baked in 4K, uh, there's not a whole lot to really dial in. I think it looks fine with the default settings. So we'll leave that alone. So as you can see, I'm already masking different materials onto the same object, and it's all being done 
in one cohesive solid UV map. I don't have to worry about different texture sets for this one set of objects. All right, moving on, we'll go ahead and just do some kind of brass. Uh, brass old, sure, why not? We'll throw this up there. And I only want this old brass to be applied to the brass parts. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply a black mask. Again, I'm going to add paint. We're still in the polyfill and I still have mesh fill open. So I'm gonna just apply it here. I'm gonna apply it here, here, and here. And now that I noticed this steel, I actually still wanted to have this steel on this end part here. So what I'll do is I'll drag my brass to the very bottom and on this steel scratched on top of the paint, I'm going to right click and add a color selection as well. And I'm going to do pick color and I want this purple color here to be selected. And just like that, we've got the steel masked to all the parts that we want, got the brass masked to all the parts that we want. I'm not going to worry about doing the little grips or anything to make this look realistic. Um, <clears throat> I just want like a basic idea. Oh, I also want this guy right here to look brass. Cool. And, um, oh, you know what? So if we take a look, the steel scratched because I added a color selection on top of the paint, it's overwriting it. So I'm going to change this uh, blending mode to linear dodge instead. That way it's adding those whites on top of uh, anything that's black if that makes any sense. Okay, so now everything that's supposed to be steel is steel, everything that's brass is brass. And now we can add our two plastics. I'm just gonna do one plastic for the sake of simplicity. Uh, oh, perfect, black, plastic, dirty. Let's try that out. And for this, again, it's gonna go on top of everything. And so I'm gonna add a black mask right click add paint and I'm just gonna add it to the parts that I want to have the black plastic so this and this and just like that all of my separate materials are in one texture set and at this point all I have to do is export and when I do so obviously you know I didn't finish there's a lot of stuff I could do to make this look a lot better but that's not the point uh, demo textures I'm going to create a new folder in here and we'll call this uh, new select folder export and now as you can see once it's done open output to directory I have all of these in one texture set now one thing I forgot to mention uh, because when you guys were doing it the other way you had to turn off padding so that there wasn't any um, you know dilation happening uh, that could be problematic, especially when you're going to be down resing your textures through mip mapping. You could have some some bleeding issues, and we don't want that. So, uh, dilation infinite is what the default I always have it set to is. Um, I won't go into the differences uh, with the other ones in this video, but just in general, I, I tend to use infinite dilation. That just means every single edge pixel of my texture. So the edge of this pixel, like each of these pixels on the very edge, they're going to essentially be like extended outward into infinity until they hit another UV island, or in this case, every other UV island's uh, extensions, dilations. So the dilation from this one, it's going to go out until it hits the dilation to this one. And that's why when we go ahead and bake the uh, textures out, Come on. They look like this. So you can see each one of these edge pixels. Again, it's going out perpendicular until it hits the edges of another one. So yeah, all this is done for me. I don't have to go take this into uh, you know Photoshop and start masking out each of these individual pieces. Um, and yeah, hopefully uh, this was helpful. I know this is you know probably gonna make a lot of you go oh my god I can't believe I've been doing it this way this whole time um, I run into it a lot and it's usually a weight of off of everyone's shoulders when they realize like there was a much simpler easier way to do it um, 
I apologize for the whoever it was that was teaching people this in the first place. Uh, but hopefully you guys can take this knowledge and really, you know, expand your workflow and, and you know, make everything more efficient and effective and make yourselves better artists. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, if I glossed over anything, just leave any comments in the comment section. Message me on my Discord. Um, that's all. Thanks for watching.